Welcome as we gather for prayer to celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation. Our opening hymn can be found in your music issue number 456, Come Holy Ghost. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have felt to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make, make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Lord and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When a crowd gathered with people from one town after another, journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground. And when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear or to hear. Then his disciples asked him, what is the meaning of this parable might be? He answered, The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard. But the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, and they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time, and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart, and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Vito, the parish family of Our Lady of Hope, asks you to confer upon these candidates the gift of the Holy Spirit through the Sacrament of Confirmation. I ask those who are present to present themselves for this sacrament to please stand. Holy Mother Church asks that its members be suitably prepared for confirmation, so 
that they may freely and knowingly accept the Holy Spirit. Bishop Vito, I testify that they have joined with their parents and teachers in our parish preparation programs. They have participated in Christian service projects and have been interviewed and questioned about their faith. They are ready to open their hearts to the Holy Spirit. My dear parents, guardians, and sponsors, your sons and daughters have been accepted for confirmation. Do you promise to help them grow in the grace of this sacrament? My dear sons and daughters, do you understand and accept the Holy Spirit into your lives? Do you know that this sacrament is not only for your personal growth, but to aid the parish and the entire church? Are you ready to accept the graces and responsibilities that confirmation brings? Jesus Christ and his church, I accept these candidates and pray that the grace and fits you are to receive will strengthen your faith and assist the growth of the kingdom of God on his earth. You are accepted to the sacrament of confirmation. Please be seated. My dear young friends, the candidates to the Sacrament of Confirmation, it is great honor, great privilege to be with you this morning, with your family members, with your friends, and those who came for the celebration of this sacrament. You are standing in this beautiful church today to open your hearts to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if God didn't look into your heart, you wouldn't be sitting in these pews. God sees in each of you what your parents do not. God sees in you what your teachers do not. God sees in you everything that you yourselves do not. God knows that you are able to surrender to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us and descends with all his power unto each of us. He unites us in the communion of the Holy Church. This spirit is the greatest gift you ever receive. Let's look around and see who gathered in our parish church today. Candidates for confirmation came to this sacramental ceremony. However, they are not here alone. Next to them, there are sponsors, the closest family members, their parents, siblings, there are grandparents, there are cousins as well as friends. We all know that you are the greatest gift, the most precious treasure for your parents. They were the ones who were most happy when you were born. They were the ones who were most happy to see that you are growing in faith. They fed you and clothed you, taught you basic behavior, and gave you an example of Christian life. Most of all, they share 
their faith with you as their parents, your grandparents, passed unto them. They remind and show that the church lasts because the Holy Spirit is always present and active in her. The Spirit made the twelve apostles ordinary and simple people sent into the world make others seeing them and hearing to the teachings of Jesus convert. This happened because the Holy Spirit was with the apostles. The church survived and developed because martyrs died for the teachings of Christ. Kingdoms and empires fell and the church based on the teachings of the apostles and the martyrdom of Christians continues. A special role in this church was played by insignificant people who are not written about in the newspapers or heard about in the news. They are also among us. They are members of Christian families. Those who transmit the faith, a gift and task. In a Christian family, the following are important. The sacraments, baptism, reconciliation, Holy Eucharist. Important are teaching prayer, going to church, religious education classes, admonition, receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The fact that you are here is not tradition, because Christ is not tradition, folklore, custom. He is not human culture created by men. We know Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why you are here, to deepen your faith. You said you would defend your faith and you would live by it. At your baptism, the priest or deacon asked, do you believe? Then this question was answered by your parents and your godparents. Today, you will answer for yourself. You will confess your faith with power and confidence. Once again, you will face the question, do you renounce Satan? The answer must be, I do. Remember, that you are free beings. God created everyone to have a free will. He has allowed us to go against him. He has allowed us to choose. You will have to choose and try to make that choice a good one. You have to learn to choose. The gifts of the Holy Spirit will help you to make good choices. You know them. You have learned about their power, their operation. The gifts of fortitude and counsel deserve special attention. This courage and right judgment is what you need most today. You have plans and dreams ahead of you. You want to be happy. You have a lot of possibilities. That's why you can be great people. You have amazing abilities. You are gifted. You are talented. So you need to recognize and work for, on all this and develop properly. You know that without working on yourself, there will be no results. Make good use of the time of youth, which will not come back. We have a lot to learn to live up to our age. One must not stray from moral principles, from God and his commandments. 
Knowledge and learning alone are not enough. It takes faith and good manners. Regarding the Decalogue, someone very aptly said, God's Ten Commandments are something like a traffic code. It is wasn't for this code, we'd run over each other and the roads, on the roads and kill each other. The Lord God gave us such a code in the commandments so that we do not derail in life. May the power of the Holy Spirit, may the gifts of the Spirit lead you to produce noble fruits of faith in the form of good deeds and radiate the life of the Spirit living in you, which God sent to teach and to remind you of his words. May God continue all good work with you and be always with you, leading you to the life which is, which is life forever. Christ is risen. He is our life, our way, and our truth. I would ask those who will be to confirmed to please stand. <clears throat> Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost, and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I would ask those who will be to confirmed to please kneel, and the other members of the congregation, please arise. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought this your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Please be seated.
Please arise. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be, one, be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from his Holy Spirit, are one. Our response to the petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For these his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by the way of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage them whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the bishops that gathered by the Holy Spirit the church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers and catechists who have journeyed with us this year, that the Spirit will continue to guide them in their efforts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one Maker and Father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles, and will that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably of, uh, to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him. So, as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, o Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope. Robert, our bishop, Nicholas, our retired bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy.
Remember also all our brothers and our sisters and our loved ones who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Ivan Davida, Bread of Life.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all the trials overcome they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bishop Vito, on behalf of the whole parish community of Our Lady of Hope, we sincerely say thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for coming to administer the sacrament. We consider this one of the most important days of the year, the day in which we gift our children with the gift of the Holy Spirit. So thank you for your presence, and thank you for your kind words. We saw each of the children with a nice big smile. Uh, and so that was a very beautiful moment. I take the opportunity to thank all of you, family and friends, and everyone else who made uh, today possible in preparing um, our children and your children. A special word of thanks obviously goes to Mrs. Karen Coetti, who worked so hard throughout the year, but particularly this time of year in preparing uh, for First Sacrament. So uh, Ms. Coetti, who's assisted by Lucy Carasetti and her uh, catechist, Mr. Zalak, and um, Mrs. Nora Nolan, as well as to our academy community and teachers. We've, we're grateful for the presence of Mr. Campella, as well as our uh, eighth grade teachers, uh, Ms. Hoffman, uh, Ms. Honan, and uh, Senora Seron, uh, and everyone else who has helped to assist and to prepare our children for today. As always, a great word of thanks to our, our music team, to our altar servers, to our clergy, Father Grandy, Deacon Paul, and Deacon Bob and everyone else that uh, has helped us to make this day so beautiful. As we've said at the beginning of Mass, the children will be processing out and back. Uh, given uh, the poor weather, we will be taking photos here. There will be the opportunity for photos with the bishop here in front of the altar. If you'd like to stay for a photo, you're more than welcome, or uh, if you could leave. Uh, just a, my own brief word of message to, to our children, to our young men and women. Uh, today is a great day for you. It's a great day for our parish and your families, and we're all very proud of you. We're proud of the work that you put into today, and we know that it's just a new beginning for you as you're touched in a special way by the presence of God today. You know, yesterday I did something uh, very tragic. I came down to the kitchen in the morning. I went over to the curry. I put the cake up in. I, I hit for the big coffee, and then I went over to the fridge. I was looking for a yogurt, and I realized I didn't put a cup underneath. You know, and it sounded different. It smelled the same. <laughs> so then I cleaned up and was able to have the coffee. But you know, today is one of those days where we could do a little bit like that in the spiritual sense of not putting the cup under and receiving uh, what we want. And so it's really up to you. You know, we heard that gospel of the seed which is sown and God throws his blessings into the world so generously, but it's up to us to receive them to be grateful for them and to use them wisely. And so that's our prayer for you today, that the blessings that God will give you to, has given you today will continue to bear fruit in your lives. Thank you, everyone. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Confirm, O God, what you have brought about in us, and preserve in the hearts of your faithful the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May they never be ashamed to confess Christ crucified before the world. Amen. And, may, and by devoted charity, may they ever fulfill his commands, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Alleluia. 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 Please join in singing our closing hymn number 424, One Spirit, One Church.
safe, one girl, one boy, so please be aware of where your child is sitting and be ready to come forward to take a picture with the bishop. If you're not staying, you can quietly leave. Thank you, have a great day.